morning. Welcome to Jags AM. I'm Brian Sexton standing in Kai Stevens' spot. J.P. Shadrick sitting in my spot on the couch. And John Osier is, well, where he always is. Welcome to Jags AM. It's the start of a busy period here in the offseason. So let's get right to big things. And we'll go with here we go Jaguars. It feels like we're towards the end of the off the field period of the off season. Free agency, the salary cap, Josh Allen is done. That leaves us with just the draft, which comes up a week from Thursday. So let me pitch it to you, J.P. Shadrick. First of all, welcome to the show. How's the offseason gone in your estimation? Yeah, I, I, so far so good, right? They checked some boxes in free agency. That was the number one priority. A lot of the fans might say, oh, they missed out on Calvin Ridley. That aside, they got Josh Allen done. That was a huge priority for them. Uh, so that deal is, is in the books and ready to roll, and they can move forward there. And now it's on to the draft and the offseason programs here as well. So, um, so far, so good in my estimation. John, it seems like most of the questions have already been answered. Yeah, I, th I think they've done what they had to do. You know, they had to fix center. Uh, they had to do some things on the defensive line to get more stout. It feels like they've done that. Uh, how free agency actually works, we'll see it play out on the field. Um, but they did, as JP said, they checked the boxes. I think they've got themselves in a situation where they can almost draft just for best available player. I think there's a hole at cornerback they've need, they need to fill, but I think they know what they want in the draft of that position. All right, back to the big board for big thing two, and that's the lights are on at the Miller Electric Center. Yesterday, the players returned for the beginning phases of the off-season program. And as guys are walking in and as you guys are getting ready to talk to players today and the coach and the general manager later this week, what's the number one storyline that you're interested in following, John? Uh, probably, it's probably pretty obvious. It's probably Trevor. Um, to me, all the check boxes stuff, all of the, hey, we fixed defensive tackle, we did this, we did this. Um, those are all minimal improvements. Uh, Trevor Lawrence improving his turnovers, improving his overall efficiency, uh, taking that next step. Um, all boats will rise if the big ship rises, JP. Yeah, there's no doubt about that, and that's where it starts. But for me, I think it's the bigger picture. Uh, you know, how high does this team rise with the tide? You know, they were, they were right there on the doorstep and then collapsed at the end of last season. Can they get past that mentally as a team? And we've, they've proven the last two years they're at least a nine-win football team. Different results both years, obviously. So what is the next step? And as an organization, how do they take that? The quarterback's the number one reason why they could take that step, but everything around that has to be really in good place as well. I'm kind of laser-focused on the same story I've had since the end of last season. That's the offensive line, obviously bringing in Mitch Morse and making sure that they were solid with Ezra Cleveland at the left guard spot. We'll see how that plays out both as they get going on the field in May with OTAs and what they decide to do next week in the draft brings us to a question of the draft. And that's the reality or the perception, however you choose to look at it, that the Jaguars must get a wide receiver in the first round. That it's paramount that they go grab that big target. And that might mean moving up, JP, for Roma Dunze, who seems to be the third of the big three. So I ask you, because I have a 19-year-old son who is sold on the idea that they have to have a receiver. Even in a receiver-rich draft, as we're told this one is, Reality or perception? Receiver's the number one priority for this team. No, I don't think that's uh, reality. They've got receivers. They can go play right now. I mean, if they didn't have guys to go run on the field in September at wide receiver, then, yeah, you'd probably need one at this moment. Do they need one down the line? Most likely, considering the, the free agency dollars that they've spent at that position. But I don't think right now is the key. And the way that the college football game's played right now, there are receivers that should be available that are good, talented receivers in most every draft in the foreseeable future. So, and, you know, unless all of a sudden Marvin Harrison's in your lap, I don't think you're trading the farm to go up in the draft to go get some wide receiver, uh, no matter who it is, at least for me at this point. Yeah, I think your little guy's going to be disappointed. I mean, it, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's perception that it, it's a need. I think there's a little bit of a narrative that uh, because they tried to pay Ridley, and I guess they reportedly went after the San Francisco wide receiver, um, you know, that they're desperate at that position. I, I don't feel that. I don't think they'll go that route. I don't think they think they need to go that route. Uh, there's a belief with this offense, meaning the Chiefs, Eagles, when Peterson was there, can play 
without a number one, as long as you've got three or four really good options. They've got that. I, I think they'll go receiver second or third round. Because as you said, Brian, it's a deep draft. I, 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 sorry, little man, I think you're gonna be disappointed. <laughs> Listen, and he'll see this, John, and he's gonna go, what the hell is John's problem? But <laughs> we ask that none every of day. Us, right, right, none of us can really answer that one. How, I, just, just shift it back real quick to the idea of how long it takes for a receiver, even a top receiver. You know, if it's Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors or Roma Dunze, there's no guarantee, even though they're physically talented and produced at the highest levels of college football, that they're going to be able to come in and be that difference maker as a rookie, John. Yeah, it, it happens more now because the game, the college game, is more wide open. It's still a different kind of passing game than the NFL, but you do see it more. You saw it with uh, Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, uh, guys like that come in and made a huge impact. But at its core, it it's almost a different sport, the NFL, than college football. So it's not a guarantee that guys come in and I contribute right away uh, at the elite level. Now, that being said, I'm going to talk about both sides of my mouth where there's a belief where second and third, even fourth round guys this year can come in and be a part of something. I think that's what they need more than anything. The perception that they need a one. Um, look, I don't know that they need a one if Christian Kirk and Zay Jones are healthy and on the field the entire year or whoever's, you know, if it's a third round receiver who comes in and takes one of those guys' spot, if they get eight touchdowns, 750 yards out of four different guys, that puts them at the top of the league in passing. They think this bunch can get them that. Just one more thought. The Falcons years ago, JP, mm -hmm. traded an entire draft essentially to go get Julio Jones, a guy I know you know from your days at Alabama. You saw Marvin Harrison this year when you did the Michigan-Ohio State game. Is Marvin Harrison Julio Jones? Is he worth that sort of a move up? Not saying that the Jaguars are the team to do that, but that anybody might be willing to give up a host of draft picks to go find him. Big, strong, and fast. Is he Julio? How many people are? I, that's, a, that's a great question. But if anybody could kind of follow in those footsteps, it feels like Harrison could be that guy. Uh, had a huge game of career-high catches against Penn State, including the game ceiling touchdown late in that one across her. He kind of went up the sideline and in. And then, of course, in the uh, the Michigan game, they fell in that game, but he had some catches in that uh, outing as well. Um, big, tall, strong, fast, um, bloodlines, everything you want in Marvin Harrison. So, he, yeah, he could be that guy. Somebody makes a move up to go get if you really feel like you need a number one type receiver. Is he Julio? Who is? Yeah. But We'll find out maybe 10 or 15 years. All right, fellas, those are your big things. When we come back, we hear all the time that it takes three years to accurately put a grade on a draft class. Well, it's been three years since the 2021 class was, uh, was selected by Trent Baalke. So we'll take a look at where the Jaguars are with the 2021 class, the production they've got, their hopes for the future, and what the 2021 draft class should be graded at when we return here on Jags AM. Would you like to control your own income? Work at Magellan Transport. Voted the coolest office space in Duval. Bring your talents and let your career flourish. Visit their website at MagellanLogistics.com and apply online. Trust service. Trust Magellan. With the first pick in the 2024 draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Duck Duck Rooter, the number one plumbing, septic, and underground utility contractor in Florida. Congratulations, Duck Duck Rooter. So tell us, how does it feel to be picked number one? Mm -hmm. Duck Duck Rooter is a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. When you need help with any plumbing or septic issue, just give us a call and relax. We'll send one of our first round draft picks to get the job done right. DuckDuckRooter.com. That's DuckDuckRooter.com. Jaguars fans are gearing up and saving big at Fanatics.com, the world's largest collection of officially licensed fan gear from all the leagues, teams, and Jaguars players you love. Shop the most trusted brands, exclusive designs by Fanatics, and autograph collectibles from today's biggest stars. Join Fanatics Rewards today and earn fan cash on every purchase. 
Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com, officially licensed everything. Move the freight, move the freight. Folks, the good folks at Magellan invite you to join their team at Magellan Transport Logistics, which has been voted some of the coolest office space in town. Visit Magellan.com and move the freight. All right, Ryan Sexton back with you, sitting in for Kai Stevens. J.P. Shadrick is kind enough to join us today. And it's early, by the way. This is early in the morning. Is it for you? Yeah, kind of. 10 o'clock? It depends on the day before, I suppose. All those late nights? Where were you last night at 9.15? It's great to be with you guys. It's nice to have you. Are you okay with that, John? What's that? Having JP. JP. It's all right. Okay. (laughs) So, look, we talk all the time. When a draft class is selected, everyone wants to throw a grade on it. It's clickbait on the different websites. And people want to be able to make flash judgments. Three years later, though, we can take an accurate look, I think, at the 2021 draft class, which is clearly one of the biggest in Jaguars history with Trevor Lawrence at the very top of it. So let's put a grade on it, right? Let me throw these guys out to you. And you see right there that there are six players from that draft class who are either starters or contributors. And obviously, Trevor Lawrence has a 17 and 16 regular season record the last two years has a playoff win and a playoff loss, 59 touchdowns, or 58 touchdowns, 39 interceptions, and we know that he had turnover issues last year. And we'll stay in the first round, Travis Etienne, back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons after missing his rookie year, 17 touchdowns and some really big plays. In fact, maybe the biggest play of his career is that 25-yard run on fourth down against the Chargers to set up the game-winning field goal. A's on both of those first picks? Yeah, I think uh, certainly for ETN, right? I mean, uh, the way he's played and those big moments you talked about and the touchdowns and he's starting to really, it feels like, come into his own as a running back. Uh, The Trevor Lawrence stuff, right? You know, the first year, kind of a wash, thrown out because of the urban stuff. And then the playoff run, um, yeah, he was great down the stretch of that, but he also had four turnovers in the playoff game and against the Chargers and ended up winning the game, coming back. Um... You know, let's see. Let's see what happens this year. I think you'll find out more about the great on Lawrence this year than you'll even know before. Because if it's not happening this year, then there are some huge questions. Which brings the other question: yeah. Do you make the deal now and move get get done with that? Has he shown you enough? Um, I think it's a B plus for Trevor right now. Right. I think he's still got some more to prove. Yeah, it's it's so hard to grade number one overall quarterback. Because if he's not Mahomes standing there with the trophy, people are like, well, he's a bust. Well, I mean, it's not either of those things. Uh, I think he's, he's still trending right. Uh, I don't want to not put a grade on it, so I'll go. I think B plus is about right. Uh, he's certainly not an F, he's certainly not a D or a C. Uh, so he's getting there. Uh, and I think if it wasn't. You know, you can't do this because he was number one overall. But if there wasn't so much focus, I think people would automatically go, oh, yeah, good pick. But it's it's Trevor. It's it's everything he was supposed to be. Has he lived up to being the second coming? Not yet. But he's not shown that he's not that yet. So I think B-plus is fine. All right, well, let's move to the second round. And I think we learned last year how valuable Tyson Campbell was. You remember he had the hamstring injury against the Colts that just seemed to linger into December. But truthfully, I don't think he looked like himself the rest of the year. He has been a very productive player for this football team. I think he has seven interceptions. Yeah, feels like that. And, and he's gotten better with the ball in the air. Remember early in his career, you know, he had trouble down the field and looking back, losing the ball and then losing the defender. And he's standing in the end zone with the football. Um, so he's gotten better as the years have gone on. Uh, let's see it in the system, right? This is supposed to be a press, you know, up against the line and a lot of contact, bump and run type of system. Can Tyson do that? I think he has the ability to do that, and he's been a good player for this team. B-plus? Um, yeah, oh, yeah, you asked for a grade. Yeah. I- I'll give him a B. Okay. I, I think there's, if you're going to be a front-line corner, there are some things that he has not shown to be that top-tier, number-one lockdown corner. Yeah, I'm going to say B with... Uh... It's, it's so hard because we're coming off a season, like you said, it, 
it just feels like a lost season. He had the pick against Indianapolis. Beyond that, you can't really remember very much that he did. Uh, I've got to believe, based on what we saw from 2022, that the reason we didn't see much was the hamstring. Yeah. So almost a B with an asterisk. If he's what he was, we felt really good about him in 2022. But coming off a of hammy, you know, you want to see complete, you know, 15 out of 17 games going 100%. Uh, so I, it, it, he, again, he's a hard guy to grade for me because – I want to be able to rely on it, and it feels like B with an incomplete. All right, let's stay in the second round, John. Walker Little, uh, yeah. 40 games played, nine starts. He started at left tackle. He started at right tackle. He started at left guard. He's been a pretty versatile player. I don't think he's he's quite reached the level that we thought when he right. first came as a rookie, where he looked so athletic and so powerful. Obviously, he's one of the highest-rated recruits coming out of high school when he came out and uh, was a top player at Stanford before getting hurt. What do you see from him? Because he's in the final year of his deal. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm waffling on this, but if he's a third rounder, I feel like it's a B. Second rounder, I feel like it's a C because you've got to sort of live up to draft potential. Um, he didn't grasp or didn't grab a hold of that left tackle spot last year or a starting position. So he's going as a swing tackle. That's valuable for the Jaguars, and they're a better team with Walker Little on it, and he's an asset. But in terms of draft grade, I'd say, you know, B minus C plus in there because he was a second round pick, and you sort of think by year four that should be a start. You know, to be fair, when Cam Robinson got hurt against the Cowboys at the end of the 2022 season, Walker Little stepped in and the momentum didn't stop. He played very well down the stretch and into the playoffs. So we have seen some really good football from him. There were arguments that he was better than Cam Robinson yeah. down the stretch. I mean, we had Jeff Logman and, and some of those guys on here saying just that, that Walker Little's performance was better at that moment. Did it carry over? Did he win the job? Did he win the right tackle job? No, uh, against Jawan Taylor. Did he? And it uh, may have been injuries. There were some injuries uh, for him last sure. year. So maybe it's not fair to say, well, he wasn't this or that. But, but to it, your point, Cam Robinson was a second round pick. First yeah. pick of the second round. He, he was a starter right away and has not been off the field, right? Second round picks should be starters sooner rather than later if they're not day one. And for whatever the circumstances were around here, he has not been able to overcome that and become a day-to-day -day starter. Well, and look, my perception is, is that the Jaguars have a hole to fill at left tackle going into the 2025 season because Cam's deal ends this year and Walker's on the final year of his rookie year. He hasn't had a chance, or as you've mentioned, claim that job. So you go, well, look, the future's set at left tackle. And I don't know that he can do that this year because he's not going to be the starter. John, you mentioned he's a swing. Yeah, I think Anton's going to move over there at that yeah. point. Yeah. So. Uh, by the way, I didn't give you a grade. C plus. Okay. All right. Well, let's uh, let's go to the third round. Andre Sisco. He's the guy who has seven interceptions. I got that wrong earlier. I think Tyson has three. Uh, but seven interceptions the last two years. He, he didn't play a lot as a rookie and has been an impact player for this team back there in the uh, the heart of the defense. Y'all go B. I mean, I, I, I think he's been really, really good at times. Um, again, a third round pick, you like the production. Were he a first round pick, you'd, eh, you know, so for third round pick, uh, very, very good. And uh, I think he's still got some steps to take. It's going to be interesting to see how he transitions to this defense. Uh, big, sort of what the book on him was, big play guy is going to make picks, nose for the ball. He's had that. Uh, the entire secondary, him included, had some breakdowns last year that you didn't like. He's gotten better at that over the years. Just the, the ball hawking and stuff that was promised is, is really coming to fruition. So, would you go with B plus? Would you? Not B. Yeah, B. give me a B minus because I think he can be better than he's even shown. And um, that's not a knock against what he's done. He's done very well. But I think his ceiling is much higher than, and his expectations for himself, I think, are much higher than uh, you might realize. So uh, there's a lot left on the table for Andre Sisco, and I think he can go get it. All right, the uh, final contributor from the 2021 Jaguars NFL draft class is tight end Luke Farrell. Uh, 12 starts in three years, but eight of them last year. They threw to him a couple of times last year. He's not a big receiving tight end. Uh, but I had more than one coach tell me that they thought that he was a gifted blocking tight end, a guy that you could really – the equal of or greater than Chris Manhurts 
who was pretty good around here for a few years. Can I go pass, fail? Yeah. I, I think he passes. I was going to okay. say. No, it, hey, it, 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 fifth round pick, I get it. Seven yeah. million tight ends, and what's the, what's the standard for a blocking tight end? Yeah, and it, it, he's been good. I think when you drafted him, uh, there was that little joke where when you Googled him, the baseball player Luke Farrell came up, yeah. and he had to post that it, <laughs> this is not me. So out of sort of obscurity, he has carved his way into – a, a big role here, and I think he'll play in the league for 10, 12 years. Sure. So for a fifth-round pick, pass. Uh, a big pass uh, with probably, if I was forced to give a grade, a <laughs> B, B plus. You got to let out of the pick. Yeah, I mean, but you're, you're cur- it's a, a, a curved scale because Which, of, thankfully for you, they had in college, that's right? That's right. I, I was not a blocking tight end, but I felt <laughs> like one sometimes. So that, yeah, that makes sense to me, right, John? You know, he's, he has a certain role here. You've got other tight ends that are going down the field, catching balls, putting yeah. up stats, obviously. He's not, Evan Ingram I mean, had 114 I mean, catches right. last year. I mean, come yeah. on. That's, that's not what he's going to be. He may be in a situation here or there. He gets his hand on the football. Uh, I'm with you, John. It's, um, it's a solid player. Yeah, he's going to play in the league a long time. Yeah. So, fifth-round pick, if you're going to play 10 years, uh, a lot of fifth-round picks are out of the league. So, there's six starters, contributors from the draft class. J. Tufele, the defensive tackle from SC, is in Cincinnati. Jordan Smith, the pass rusher, out of the game. Jalen Camp, the wide receiver, out of the game. So, how about an overall grade on a draft class with five starters and a significant contributor in Luke Farrell? I'd say B. I mean, it, it may be hard to give an A because you don't have beyond what uh, Trevor won Pro Bowl – you don't have, like, huge, um, you know, face of the league guy yet. But it also is, is a class that clearly helped pull you out of the abyss and set the tone for two back-to-back winning seasons. So it's certainly not a bad class. Uh, and I think how Trevor – if Trevor's Trevor, it's an A if everybody else is a bust. Yeah, it's a B for me, and it can improve to an A yeah. if some of these guys get to their next deal and stick around and, and you know, prove that they can be cornerstone players for this organization. So, um, B with room to grow. Yeah. If they I'm, win a Super Bowl while he's here and uh, yeah. Trevor's in the Hall of Fame, yeah. it's the greatest draft in history. <laughs> a plus, plus, plus. <laughs> and, uh, no, it, it all will be ultimately, you know, this is great. In 10 years, it'll be graded on him with that to be said I'll go with a B plus because you you did get five starters and a guy here and we hadn't seen productive drafts like that in a long yeah. time so lean that way also I guess the optimism I have for who Trevor Lawrence is going to be in his fourth season pushes me in that direction but that's it after three years we can take a look at it and I think that's a fair way to grade it uh we're not we're, doing the 2020 class are we no okay <laughs> no okay just make it sure no no All right, when we come back, we'll turn to this year's draft, the 2024 class. We'll look a little bit at the defensive line and some prospects and probabilities of what the Jaguars could be looking at. That's next on Jags AM. Hi, this is Walker Little from the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you need to make room to watch football in your home or need a place to park your boat or RV, store it at Atlantic Self Storage, the official storage partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Over 50 locations in Northeast Florida, free 24-hour access, month-to-month leases. They make storage easy. Go to AtlanticSelfStorage.com or call 877-WE-STORE to find out why they're Jacksonville's number one pick for storage. Hey, Florida. This is Luke Fortner, center for the Jacksonville Jaguars. We all know the rush of a good game, but there's no winning with aggressive driving on our roads. It's all about strategy and control. Embrace the space with the driver in front of you, go the speed limit, and use that blinker. These are the moves that make us all champions of the road. Target Zero is our game plan for safer roads and is a testament to our teamwork and dedication. Join me and let's get everyone home safely every single day. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a whole lot more than just wings. Craving the ultimate game day experience? Look no further. Swing by Mr. Chubby's and indulge in the biggest and best wings in town, all while soaking up the lively atmosphere with fellow sports fans. With plenty of game day specials and locations on the west side, Fleming Island, Ponte Vedra Beach, and new this season, Everbank Stadium, they're here for all your game day needs. Mr. Chubby's Wings is a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mr. Chubby's Wings, before the game, after the game, and during the game. 
Jaguars fans, gear up at Fanatics.com with all the latest Jaguar styles. Shop now and get today's special offer. Fanatics.com officially licensed everything. And welcome back to Jags AM from the Hyundai Studios inside the Miller Electric Center in Jacksonville. Brian, John, JP joining us today. We turn our attention to the 2024 NFL Draft. We've talked receiver, we've talked cornerback, we've talked offensive line ad nauseum. But on the heels of the Josh Allen signing late last week, I thought maybe we'd take a look at the defensive line. But before we get started looking at names, how probable do you think it is that the Jaguars could spend a first round pick on someone in their front seven on defense? Um, if the draft board in the first round forces it, I think it could happen. Uh, I don't know that they're going in with that at the top of their priority list. Uh, Eric Armstead obviously changed that. Yeah, and obviously it did. You still want to draft with a five-year plan. I'm, I'm not sure Eric's a five-year plan at this point of his right. career. I, I hope he is. Um, so if, if there's a guy there who, it, who you think is dominant, who is a big-time player, it's more palpable to draft that on the defensive line sometimes in the offensive line meaning you rotate so much on the defensive line you can get Guys production field more, yeah. even if he's not a quote starter so uh you can lean that way i'd be surprised if that's the pick it's not a gr there's a couple of tackles in the first round it's not a great class for it um so the couple of guys may be off the board or not make sense but philosophically, no problem with it because you're never going to go wrong if you draft a really, really good interior defensive line. You asked about the front seven. Yeah. So that includes okay, linebackers. Sure. And they've Edge drafted, rushers. They've drafted linebackers. So so many linebackers yeah. around here the last two years. I don't think you go that high with a lineman. Maybe I'm wrong. but uh, And you've got the edge rushers. They're, they're set in place for a long time to come. I don't think it's there. If it's anything, it's an interior D lineman, but I think percentage chance is pretty low. I mean, considering all the other things that they could use uh, more quickly than that. Well, and at 17, it seems to be the sweet spot. There will be a couple of cornerbacks around that area as well as offensive linemen. But just for argument's sake, let's take a look at the edge rushers, because what if a guy like Jared Verse falls to you, right? You can never have enough pass rush. We always go back to the Giants and beating the undefeated Patriots in January of 2008. And and Jared Verse is a guy, it's hard to kind of figure out where he falls in this equation, but hyper-productive at Florida State the last couple of years. Yeah, I think he tested pretty well, too, John. Yeah. I remember right at the combine and, and really showed up there, which was a lot of people were looking for that workout and uh, really flashed it pretty well, but a uh, good, solid player, and um, we'll see what the future holds for Verse. Hey, look, it's the same philosophy that I just discussed. If you draft him, if, if you think he's a disruptive force, and is going to be a five or six year front line big time player. I say five or six hits, he's with the contract uh, when it winds up. Then there's nothing wrong with the pick because it, you're in nickel more than you are in anything else. You're in pass rush situations. Uh, you can find a place to move Trayvon Walker if you think that Josh Allen and, and a rookie can have impact. You can move guys around in this league and impact the quarterback. So if this is the best player on the board at 17, uh, there's always a strong argument for if you have best pass rusher and best cornerback on the board and they're graded equally, I'm a guy who says take the pass rusher because that guy can disrupt every play. A cornerback affects one, only affects it if you throw at him. It doesn't seem logical because last year you had Trayvon and Josh combined for 27 and a half sacks, which was the most by a duo in the NFL last year. But you can be great if yeah. you're dominant up front. Exactly. So it, so let's turn our attention to these defensive tackles because there are a couple in particular. Byron Murphy, uh, Johnny Newton from Illinois, and Chris Jenkins from Michigan, who's a guy I know you saw yep. uh, when you were doing some college football last year. It's probable that all three of these guys are sitting there at 17. You don't need it. So this might be a spot if this is the best player on the board that you're backing up, right? Kind of like the Jaguars did last year where they backed out of 24 and made themselves available all the way at 27 to grab the guy they really wanted. Yeah, so much of this is, you know, it's hard for us to predict this because we don't, you know, it, if Trent Baalke and the Brain Trust looks at Brian Murphy and said, this is Aaron Donald, then who cares? Yeah, it doesn't matter yeah. what you take. What you have on the roster. So uh, not knowing 
their passions on, on, on certain players. And with Ryan Nielsen in his first year as the defensive coordinator, yeah. it's hard to project. So, again, it's such a cop-out, but if, if, if this guy's great, take him because he, he's going to disrupt the game. Uh, I don't think that's the route they go because I think, I think cornerback is such a glaring need that it makes sense. But um, there's nothing wrong with him or Newton. JP. No. And, uh, it, what's Devon Hamilton's health status? Yeah. Right? I think that might have uh, a little bit. Serious to issues with to deal with last year. Right. As he passed those, uh, you know, he's trying to get back later in the season last year, but it was that was so dramatic and, and such a big uh, injury for him. So um, is he right? And I think that might tell you a whole lot about what they think about this position moving ahead. Overall. Right, plus, they have uh, Armstead can move around a That's little right, bit. Yeah. Trayvon. So They've there's so many options. moving parts. It, it's always hard these days. I run into the same problem at safety sometimes, too, in linebacker. We're used to talking about terms of, from the 1990s. Everybody's in so many sub packages now, and everybody moves around so much. You know, it's okay to have guys who can move around on, on the front of your defensive line, and they have the versatility to do that. So sliding one more guy in there can make an impact might make sense if they do nothing on the defensive line next week during the draft are they still in a great spot for next year are they in a good spot next year or do you think they will have missed an opportunity i think they're in a great spot next year with all the guys they have that they've uh, they've signed they've got josh allen they've got trayvon walker who can move around they've got uh roy robertson harris they've got uh, devon hamilton if he's fully healthy they've got all these pieces that they've had in free agency in the draft collectively together in the, the front four, front five, whatever combination you want to use of that, I think they're in a great spot, at least for next year. Now, two, three years down the line, there's always questions. But for next season, this should be um, one of the top defensive lines in the AFC. I think they're in a great spot. You remember when you used to have, like, a good Christmases but didn't quite get the present you wanted? <laughs> Jared Verse, a guy like that, yeah. add one more pass rusher to a really good group could be like when your dad left the bike outside. Yeah. What's in the corner? Hey, oh, hey what's the in the corner? Over there. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it, I could see fans out there right now going, oh, then I really want one more pass rusher. I could see Trent Balky not saying it to me, but it, boy, I, I really would love to have that impact. So very, very good. Um, there one more guy could make him dominant yeah. if it's an impact rookie. Which is why we had the conversation, even though it doesn't seem likely for the Jaguars to address the defensive line, at least not in the first round. All right, we'll come back and wrap up this edition of Jags AM from the Hyundai Studios inside the Miller Electric Center right after this. Frank Franzi here. When you want barbecue in Jacksonville, you want Bono's Pit Barbecue. You can find Bono's locations all around town and on game day at Everbank Stadium because Bono's is the official barbecue of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Over 70 years of authentic Southern Pit Barbecue, we are the local barbecue joint in bbq Vol for generations of people in Jacksonville. Go to Bono'sBarbecue.com to learn more or call 904-880-8310 today. And remember, if you don't see a pit, it ain't legit. This important message is for business owners. The hurricane season is here, and the storm drains at your commercial property must be draining. Duck Duck Rooter is here to help. Give them a call today at 904-862-6769 and schedule a thorough hydro jetting and cleaning of your property's storm drains. Duck Duck Rooter will bring their powerful VACCON truck and get the job done right. Duck Duck Rooter, your trusted storm drain maintenance experts. DuckDuckRooter.com, a proud partner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars bring performance, strength, and passion to every play. And you'll find the same when you bank with EverBank. Open an EverBank performance savings account and score serious savings. See what you could earn at everbank.com slash Jaguars. EverBank, advantage you. Member FDIC and the official bank of the Jacksonville Jaguars. All right, back to wrap it up here on a Tuesday. Jags AM from the Hyundai Studios. 
Uh, I mentioned uh, the 19-year-old who wanted to talk receiver yesterday. He also wanted to talk about the promo for the new uniforms. Oh. Well, the old uniforms, the throwbacks that appear to be returning this year. Is that hype you guys up? Hype? Uh, yeah. I mean, it's cool, right? I mean, They're the, cool. The, the throwback is, is fun, and we'll see what the full thing looks like. I mean, I, we only saw the logo, uh, the full cat logo. That was video. called, when it first came out, I remember the press conference, it was called the Prowler. The Prowler. The Prowler. <laughs> right. And they put it on the sleeves. No, I've seen the mock-ups. Uh, I think there's one with Trevor, a, uh, a Photoshop deal of Trevor wearing it. Hey, it's cool. Okay. It'd be fun. Okay. Look, it, it, it's not something that I'm overly passionate about. Yeah. But fans are fired up for yeah, it. Yeah, they are. So good for them. You I know mean, what would make it look a whole lot better? If they won that game. <laughs> they could wear polka dots. I don't care as long as they win the game. Always comes back to the bottom line. No offense to polka dots. All right. Uh, thanks for jumping in with us. It's great to see you. We'll hear from some players today. Uh, the coach and the general manager will talk on Thursday, and I'm sure you'll cover all of that on Jaguars Happy Hour. We'll have it on, uh, of course, Huddle Up is the name of the podcast Wednesday. That's right. With Bucky Brooks. No you might around. have heard of him. So we got that, and of course, Happy Hour Thursday. All right. Much more ahead here. It's kind of getting to be a busy week. And the next week, I'm headed for Detroit, so this show will be live on Wednesday uh, from Detroit and from the Hyundai studios. So we'll see you then. Thanks for joining us on Jags AM.